they said, who are your favorites? And I said, well, River Phoenix would be amazing and Keanu Reeves would be amazing, but they'll probably never do it. And so we sent it to them and it just was, I guess, the right timing and they were interested. And I think I was inspired by a script I saw when I was first living in L.A. in 1975. I would come to the AFI's library when it was in the Doheny Mansion. Uh -huh. In that library was a, a copy, which is in this, this library, it's probably the same copy of A Clockwork Orange. And Kubrick had written like in a single Ogden Nash style column down the middle. The action was written words that were in a single column, and then the dialogue was all the way through. And I thought that was really beautiful looking, and it was not traditional. So I was just throwing traditional. I didn't really plan to be going to studios with it, so which still insists like on pica type and you know twelve point. And if it's not that, <clears throat> it just looks weird, and they get it gets tossed <laughs> tossed away. But um, and so I didn't really get the attention of people so so easily after drugstore cowboy here in la because of that script because it looked so odd and it was 70 pages and a lot of the scenes were sort of truncated actions that we we sort of would explode out into like long scenes not really um, necessarily um, improving, but because of just explaining the action that would be like in a paragraph We're going to use non-professional actors we had in mind in Portland, more like Malinoche, which I kind of wanted to go back to that, that idea of doing something very inexpensive and just with local Portlanders. And so we, we were kind of ready to do it. And then um, somebody suggested that maybe, like, you know, we try actors, you know, in L.A. And they said, who are your favorites? And I said, well, River Phoenix would be amazing. And Keanu Reeves would be amazing, but they'll probably never do it. And so we sent it to them and it just was, I guess, the right timing. And they were interested, which was Keanu was like first. And then River, you know, after thinking about it a lot, um, jumped into. So it sort of changed the whole game plan. And along with those guys, they were being told by um, other projects that were in Los Angeles that, no, we can't do your movie because... We're doing my own private Idaho, and which I learned at a screening. I was in town and somebody was congratulating me. And I said, uh, why? And they said, because River and Keanu are doing your movie. And that's how I found out, just by <laughs> an executive in the screening. Yeah, there's like a whole story about the campfire scene, which sort of is usually looked at as the, the best scene in the movie. I mean, River, he does a lot of different things when he worked. He had, you know, like a lot of notes in his screenplays, you know, when he, you know, um, knew that he would know how you were filming it. So he, he knew that when he walked through that doorway, two weeks later, he would walk into, you know, continue that walk into another location and it would connect. So he would do things like walk backwards through the doorway and sneeze in the middle of the doorway. <laughs> and match that because he liked to see the magic of, of when it cut to the next location that you shot two weeks later. So he was sort of nuts and bolts. He would watch uh, the dailies every day, study them. Uh, Keanu didn't like watching the dailies. The first week, I think, of filming, we, it was the, the fight that he has with his brother in the trailer. And it's, it's kind of a you know pinnacle emo emotional scene. And I, he kind of felt like he didn't get the scene. It wasn't like the patented scene, which I think he was famous for in Stand By Me. Um, there was a pinnacle scene in Stand By Me, which is huge. And I think that ever since then, you know, he looked for the scene that would be his scene, you know, and, you know, he sort of pinpointed this one scene and he asked whether he could uh, work on it with uh, a friend who had also con uh, convinced him to play his character as a gay character because he wasn't originally in the script a gay kid and his friend was from act up in new york um matt ebert who was actually his assistant river's assistant 
and he had met on Dogfight, the previous film that he had done. I said, yeah, if you want to work on it. He also made me promise that it would be like the last scene that we do before we go to Rome, which was in Seattle, and we did it on a stage. You know, he just prepared for it. It was the end of the shoot, so he could like, for the whole, whole rest of the four weeks of shooting in the States, he could work on it and he could um, get it ready. And so, you know, also when we shot it, he asked, uh, he said, we'll only shoot it four, from four angles. Each time, it'll, we'll just go all the way through one time. So he was sort of directing. And uh, it was like the wide angle, the overs, and then the clo uh, close-ups would be just run through one time. And what was your... And then he just showed us what... And you were good with that? Yeah, I mean, I was fine. You know, I mean, I was, I was sort of surprised. I don't know if I could see during that day, you know, that this was going to be the great scene. But um, yeah, I usually always spoil my actors and let them, especially if it's not, you know, it's not in any way going to like derail the production. So it was great. Yeah. One influence was Werner Herzog's Heart of Glass. Um, which had a lot of, a few moments of uh, time-lapse clouds going over mountains in the Alps or the German mountains. And uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the other stuff that I had seen with it, there was a PBS time-lapse like program that I had watched before shooting Malanoche, in which we were putting time-lapse in that. We were also using it in like a senior project that Eric Edwards and I had made. So I was doing time-lapse kind of like in all those films. Drugstore has some time-lapse. This was um, something that we're, wherever we went, we would like set up a camera and, you know, beside a road and shoot a farmhouse with the clouds. And we were an amazing part of Oregon. So there was always some amazing cloud um, formation. And the pr producer said, okay, so um, what are you going to use these for? And we said, well, we don't know, but we, we sort of like them. And she said, yeah, but you know, we have so many of them and, you know, it's costing a lot of money to shoot. <laughs> and, and so we started to taper off and like make less of them. But then we found the, the, you know, sort of, it was this dream sequence, you know, sort of a dream in between two locations. So it was sort of the interior of, of, um, Mike, Mike Rivers characters, um, mind, you know. <laughs> 